Hi, I'm Rick R. Reed, and I'd like to share with you today a little taste of my new novel, a contemporary romance called Hungry for Love. The moment I'd like to share with you today is the time when our two love interests, Brandon and Nate, first lay eyes on each other. Even though nothing happens until later, their connection with their eyes say it all. So here's the sample. Nate should have known better than to run the trails at Green Lake on a sunny Sunday. He fought against rollerbladers, bikers, gaggles of young mothers with strollers, couples holding hands, other runners and walkers, and even swimmers who spilled from the lake's two beaches. It was hard to get into any kind of stride when every few minutes he was dodging a bicycle or jumping over a pair of leash dachshunds. But there were perks to running on a sunny Sunday around Green Lake. Eye candy. As crowded as the popular lake was, it was crowded too with any number of handsome young men with lean, fit bodies doing exactly what he was. The bonus was that most of them, like Nate, were shirtless. Their muscles stood out, glistening, defined by a semi-gloss coat of sweat. There was a certain sexual tension in the air. He had passed the dark-haired man once before, since he was running the opposite direction from Nate. Their eyes had met, and Nate was struck by the intense hazel color of the other man's irises. The flecks of gold in his eyes were almost hypnotic, and he had a beard that Nate could feel, chafing against the tender skin of his neck. The man's long, lean body, fur-covered, and the absolutely fierce pace he was able to keep up in spite of the crowds all around also struck Nate. What was the guy doing, anyway? Sub-seven-minute miles? After drinking all last night and indulging himself with banana, walnut, pancakes, and bacon this morning, Nate was lucky if he was maintaining a pace of ten- or eleven-minute miles. Even though he wasn't running as fast as the other guy, Nate still grinned, knowing in the brief moment of eye contact he had been mutually admired. It was funny how much could be learned in one flirtatious glance, passing someone else. The language of the eyes was so much more eloquent than the one of the tongue. Eyes spoke honestly and without inhibition. This guy's lovely orbs, for example, told him that this handsome, dark-haired stranger was gay and that maybe, just maybe, he was interested. Straight men did not hold a gaze as long as gay men did, why it was practically an art form. Now, as Nate pushed himself to complete the three-month, three, I'm sorry, three-mile circumference of the water's edge, he wished he had seen the guy again. Perhaps they could have talked, exchanged numbers, maybe gotten together later to compare running tips, to get to know one another. To have sex? Nate chuckled, slowing at a pier near the aqua theater and walking out on it to stretch. Well, sure, he thought, surprising himself, but there was something about this guy, the openness in his eyes, that made him think of the possibility of something more. Nate looked around him from the vantage point of the low, wood-slatted pier and saw no one who looked like the dark-haired young man he had passed earlier. Isn't that always my luck? Nate pulled one of his calves against the back of his thigh, searching for that perfect, dark-haired man. Because their encounter had been so fleeting, Nate was able to ascribe all sorts of wonderful characteristics to the guy. Things like a quirky sense of humor, a love of books, an insatiable sexual appetite, a capacity for kindness and compassion, a love of nature that may or may not have been true. He brushed some sweat from his forehead, his hopes of seeing the dark-haired man once more thoroughly quashed. Besides, didn't Quentin Crisp, one of Nate's literary heroes, once claim there was no great dark man? It was only an illusion, something unattainable, yet something for which we hunger, nonetheless. And that's my excerpt.
Uh, I hope it piqued your interest enough to maybe want to pick up a copy of Hungry for Love, available at the Dream Spinner Press website, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, all romance ebooks, and all good booksellers. Uh, thank you for listening, and have a great day.